enga iwi, enga mana, enga reo, na mihinui o te rā, and kia rana to those wonderful drummers. Let's give them a round of applause. I would like to make some acknowledgements today. I'd like to acknowledge um, Kura Moiaho Tenakwe. Thank you for welcoming us to this place. Um, Helen Kelly, President of the CTU, great to have you here. Honourable Annette King, MP. Um, and also we have some other MPs here. Um, James Shaw, Denise Roche, Ian um, Lees Galloway, and any others that might be here? No? Okay. You'd I'd hate to miss you out. I'd like to acknowledge Deputy Mayor Justin Lester and Councillor Paul Eagle, both of whom have been really supportive on the living wage for Wellington. And I'd like to acknowledge um, also Lindy McIntyre and all of the team who've actually really made such a difference. And all of the people here who came in and talked to a council, uh, made submissions, went to meetings out in the suburbs or in committee room one and actually said it made a difference and it mattered and that's how you wanted your rates spent. Because all of the people from Wellington that are part of the living wage movement directly or indirectly, they're your rates too, and it's your city. And it's great to also welcome um, Muriel Tunoho, Don Pride, the co-presidents, Bill Newson, National Secretary, John Ryle, assist Assistant National Secretary, all of the unions and officials from around these islands. Lindy, um, I've acknowledged you, but most of all, I want to acknowledge the people that you see early in the morning, late at night, delivering services to private businesses, to councils, you are the people that actually make our cities and our towns and our country actually work for people. So a big thank you and on behalf to all of the members of the unions and all of the workers that do the stuff. <laughs> Politicians, we try to talk the walk, we try to walk the talk. Some of us even pedal a little bit. <laughs> but it, we are not the ones that actually deliver the services. Unless we actually fund what happens, unless you're actually on the roads, in the buildings, in the cafes, our, place, our places would grind to a halt. So thank you. Now, I'm not in favour of every amalgamation, as some of you will know. But this is a very good amalgamation. I'm delighted to be able to welcome you to the capital and mark the landmark decision by the two unions to amalgamate. It's going to be some 50,000 members, which will be the largest private union in New Zealand and the second largest behind the public service, the PSA. And unions, and maybe it's sad, maybe it's not, that unions are as essential today as when they were first formed. The issues are complex and there are always more and more health and safety issues in the new world of technology that's meant to make life easy. It sometimes makes um, life more difficult for all of us. But I really acknowledge your real commitment to health and safety, not just worrying about worm farms, um, something a little deeper. But also the way that you advocate for your members' development and also for their a decent wage. You know, the minimum wage, look, it's better to have a minimum wage than not have a minimum wage. There are countries around this world with no minimum wage and incredibly poor worker protection. But the minimum wage is not enough to bring up kids and have a decent life and to be able to participate and to make sure that you're not working three jobs and you can actually come along to whether it's your kids' parent-teacher evening or whether it's participating in civic society. Not everyone chooses to come along and um, use their spare time to come and make submissions to council, but thank you to those of you that do. Um, it was a real honour to be the first council in New Zealand, but not by any means across the world, to commit to a living wage. And we do have work to do on that still. We are extending this year to our council-controlled organisations of the Zoo and the Museums Trust, and we will be extending that on a case-by-case -case basis to the different contracts this year. And that's going to be some tough debates, but I am committed to making sure that people can earn a wage that is a real living wage and that you can participate fully in 
this this city and we I think we will not for long be the only council that's committed to a living wage. So we're going to stick it out. We're going to show that it can work, not just for Wellington, but so that other councils around the country can join us. I'd also like to acknowledge, um, in particular, Annette King. I was, I'm going to be... I don't know if anyone else is joining me in a cardboard box on Friday night that's sort of promoting um, consideration about the issues of the homeless. But one of the reasons that we actually have got fewer homeless in Wellington than we might have is that wonderful partnership that you led from government, Annette King, um, with our social housing. This is a council that does care about people on a range of wages, on a range of backgrounds, with a range of issues. Yes, we're very keen on the economic promotion and the economic growth of whether it's film museums or airport extensions, whether it's um, more cafes, more tourism, more education. But it's got to be jobs for everybody, not only in the high-tech, you know, PhD areas. We need the city to be working for everybody and to be an inclusive city. So I'd just like to finish by ma making my sincere congratulations for having a single union to bring together trades and occupations, opportunities, better wages, and development of workers. Because it's pretty tough when you're working full-time to take that time out for increasing your own skills. But it's really important. Who knows what the future is going to bring in terms of autonomous vehicles, in terms of robotics at, in factories, in terms of all of those things. I don't know if anyone else has got completely wrapped up in watching um, Humans, that little series on TV. OK, hands up, who's been watching Humans? Yeah, OK, there's a few of you. Well, it's quite um, an alarming bit of science fiction in terms of workers and the future. And if we don't have unions to protect the rights of workers, who is going to protect the rights of workers? So well done, well done for coming together. And I think we have an exciting future in this city and this country. Kia ora.